Hi everyone, I'm Olivia Fletcher. I've just started the third year of my PhD at the University of Liverpool, which looks at young people's use of health tracking technologies and the geographies of surveillance. Today, I'm going to discuss some of my findings from my interviews surrounding the everydayness and materiality of self-tracking data. I'm going to start by giving a brief overview of how I'm applying feminist new materialism to my work, and then we'll follow with a discussion of how young people use self-tracking technologies in their everyday lives, particularly how my participants experience the technologies and the moments where technology did not integrate well with the users and their everyday lives. I follow Lupton and Thorpe et al's use of feminist new materialism, which Lupton argues helps us to reimagine human technology relationships. This theory emphasises the vitality and liveliness of non-human matter and looks at the connections and entanglements between humans, non-humans and non-human vital forces. These assemblages generate effective forces in agential capacities, which are impacted by the affordances built into the technologies and our bodily affordances impacting which capacities are opened and closed, and the emotions and the experiences self-trackers have within this assemblage. I'm now going to apply these concepts to my own research. The effective forces and agential capacities impacted how my participants experienced their self-tracking technologies. One way that these capacities and forces impacted their experience was whether the technology was seen as useful and enjoyable. For example, Liz, who felt enjoyment from reaching her step target. Liz said, but particularly in lockdown, I always tried to hit 10,000 steps a day, this arbitrary number that someone's come up with. I always try and hit 10,000 steps a day, and I enjoy, I really enjoy tracking my steps. These forces and capacities also influenced how the technologies are incorporated into everyday routines. For example, for Jenny, self-tracking technologies impacted her everyday movement. Jenny said, it also influences me to do more walking because I know I'll be checking it later. There's been times recently where there's been an option for me to get a taxi and I've said, no, it's fine, I'll walk. Because I know that if I walk, I'll be more likely to reach that step target later when I check. So the forces and capacities also impact how long the technology is used for. For Jacob, he has come to depend on his watch and uses it every day. Jacob said, I tend not to leave the house if it has run out of battery. It only have, ever happens in very, very rare cases. So like everywhere I go, I've got my phone, my wallet, my car keys and my watch. I always have it on me. Agential capacities can also be closed off. This can be if the app's affordances don't integrate well with the self-tracker's social context. For example, Ava no longer checks her steps as often due to her office job. Ava said, recently I've tried not to look at it because I'm sat in an office all day and I've sat down. It's not doing very many steps a day, but before then I used to try and do, not 10,000, but I used to look at that probably every day to be honest. But now I'm not as much, just because I'm sat down all day, so I know it's not going to be a lot of steps. I think uni as well, because you're like, it's sort of your own time and you can manage it yourself, so I think I'd be checking it more. Because if I wanted more, I could kind of just go out for a walk. But I think now if I get back from work, it's dark and I can't go out anyway. The effective forces can also be seen as constraining. For example, for Amelia, her watch did not integrate well with her embodied context and caused feelings of dislike for the watch, which actually led to her not using the watch at all. Amelia said, sometimes my mind was telling me, take it easy, and my fitness watch was like, literally buzzing, saying, get up and move, get up and move. I think it's really, really difficult. I also think sometimes it's not that accurate. Sometimes if you're wearing a watch and it's telling me to get up and move and I'd be like, just sat down for my dinner, so I don't really like them actually. My discussion has demonstrated how self-tracking technologies and their associated data do not have the same meaning for everyone and come to matter in different ways in different socio-cultural contexts, exemplifying the complexity of self-tracking data and therefore showing the importance of examining the capacities and forces generated with and through technologies. It also demonstrates the multiple forces such as technologies that are involved in producing the self-tracking subject. Thank you very much for listening and feel free to ask me any questions or email me with any questions and the references are included on the next slide.